Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at the Q7 FY326 quadcopter and also at the controller. And what we're going to be doing is opening them both up, taking a look at the antennas, and we're going to be basically extending the range um, on the controller by adding a 2.4 gigahertz router antenna as well as on the quadcopter itself. Um, we're going to open that up and see um, if that can also be modded to increase range. Um, some people claim that the range is really good. They're getting, you know, maybe 300 feet or so. Um, the one I got is really only 100 to 150 feet. So if you're flying in a park, you will probably, well, I anyway lost range and um, it just kind of drops out of the sky or it kind of drops until it comes back into range and then you have control again. So it's kind of irritating, but I've done it before on a few of my other quadcopters and um, I'm sure it'll be just as easy on this one. So we're going to take this apart and take a look and get started with the mod. Okay, so once you got your antenna, 2.4 gigahertz antenna from eBay or an old router or wherever you got it, you want to just make sure it's the proper wavelength. And um, basically, a uh, quarter wavelength is 3.12 centimeters, half wavelength 6.25, and a full is 12.5 centimeters. So I have a few antennas here, and they all should be around the 3.12 centimeter wavelength, which is the quarter wavelength. And it's good to just test them. These were from uh, a couple of controllers actually and that didn't have good range and I can actually see why now. Um, you want it to be 3.12 centimeters long, the portion that's um, unshielded above the decoupler. And so this one is, whoops, that one should be fine there. And then the other the other two here, um, I'm kind of figuring out now why they didn't have very good range. They're actually two and a half, not even two and a half centimeters long in the unshielded portion. So, you know, you can re it really does make a difference. This one's even shorter, not even two and a half. So it really does make a difference in the reception. If they're the proper wavelength, it's going to travel correctly through the air and you'll have a better signal. So once you get your antenna and your controller here, we're going to get started. So you take your soldering iron. Hopefully you guys have a, a soldering iron. Move this over here. And all you want to do is desolder that existing antenna this sorry about this soldering iron tip it's pretty gnarly but it works so I'm just going to use it so just apply a little bit of heat to the existing one and it should pull right off now just remember that the center conductor goes on that portion that has the solder and then this pad over here is the um, grounding pad so the first thing we want to do is tin the that grounding pad up with a little bit of solder. And the way we do that is put a little bit of soldering flux on it. I usually put some soldering flux. It really helps a lot. It helps the solder stick. And then just give it a little dab. You see that? So you have a nice load solder tab there. Okay. Good. So that's all tinned up. Now we want to um, strip the wire. There's a center conductor and then there's a some clear insulation and then this is the actual ground shielding that's around that insulation. So you just want to this the length of this wire doesn't really matter so don't worry about trimming this too short. This is the length that matters above the decoupler. So you just want to um, snip enough here, a little bit, a little bit of a length, to be able to stick onto that solder pad there. And then you want to actually um, 
cut a little bit of this black sheathing off, which I had already done, or actually this was already done from the last controller it was on. Okay, so before you solder the 2.4 gigahertz antenna on, you're going to want to make sure that um, you put it through the proper sheathing before you actually do the soldering. So with this one here, the way it works is it goes through this hole here. And then this part sits right in here. And then the tip just slides on like that. Okay. Actually, also this one goes on too. This is the part that is the actual hinge on the bottom, so we want to make sure that can go through as well. So I'm going to push that through, make sure this is all going together correctly. There we go. Okay, looks good. Because when this is soldered on the on the actual board, you won't be able to get any of this stuff off and on and off if, if yours has the same orientation as this one. Okay, so I'll just make sure that's on first and then start the soldering. Soldering. Soldering if you're from the UK. Alright, zooming in a little bit. And let's get this started. So soldering flux really helps. I recommend putting a dab on all of your items that you're soldering. Where's our soldering iron? Here we go. Okay, so center conductor goes here on this tab. Just a little dab till they both melt together. Done. And this one over here, the sheathing will melt onto the next tab over. Make sure none of the solder flows onto anything else. Done. Okay, good. It's pretty hard to see what it looks like on the camera, but center conductor is soldered to that tab. There's a space and insulation, rubber uh, plastic insulation, and then there's the next tab that the ground insulation is soldered to, and there's no connections in between. It's really good to put a little bit of hot glue on the joint. So I'm going to go ahead and just reinforce this with a little bit of hot glue. It just keeps it from uh, shaking loose eventually and then you'll have a, a problem. So I just like to put a little dab, a little glob. Most electronics have this on them on solder joints where the wire is. <sighs> just so the wire doesn't shake loose. So if you've got a hot glue gun, or your wife does, or girlfriend, you can just commandeer it for a bit and use that. Just a little glob there, touching the circuit board and on the black wire to brace it. Okay, so the next step is going to be actually drilling a hole in the top of the controller and making it large enough so this can set inside and clamping it in place. Okay, so we're going to be drilling a hole about the size of the um, antenna sheathing right into the top here. And probably what I should have done was drilled that hole before I even soldered the antenna on, but that's okay. We can make it work. So I'm basically just going to drill a hole right in between these two halves, right around here. Just try to get a drill bit that kind of matches up in the width of your 
your um, antenna, how it's going to sit inside this black sheathing here. I'm not sure what the size is, but um, I found a drill bit that's about that size. So let's. Okay, so got the hole drilled, got the antenna in there. It's going to be a little loose for now. And what I want to do is actually know which way I want to um, orientate this, this antenna. Basically, let's go ahead and put the cap on to see what it's going to look like. When this cover's on, you may not have to do this. Your antenna may already have come with the cap on but just to see how it's going to go. You, you want to have it um, parallel with the antenna that's in your quadcopter. So usually, usually this angle is the best angle to go um, parallel to whatever, whatever orientation the antenna is in the quadcopter. So if the, if the antenna in the quadcopter is kind of at the same parallel angle, this would be great. Um, if the antenna in the quadcopter is like sticking down um, this way in the quadcopter, this would be good. So we're going to go ahead and take apart the Q7 FY326 first just to see what the orientation is on the antenna and see if that can be improved first and then we'll come back to um, securing this in the proper orientation. <laughs> Okay, so once the Q7's opened up, we can kind of inspect it here. And first things we're looking at is the flight controller. So it looks like the flight controller, this is the this is the antenna here. And when I first opened it, the antenna was actually pushed right over the flight controller just directly over the circuit board and um, the top was probably kind of pushing it down as well. So that's a bad sign right there. Basically what's happening is the circuit board is blocking most of the signal because um, when you're flying it away from you, your antenna is actually trying to transmit underneath and through the circuit board to um, reach this antenna. So it looks like it's probably the correct 3.12 centimeter wavelength. Let's just double check. It's correct by measuring it here. Yeah, so it is the correct wavelength. The controller was also the correct wavelength. And it looks like this one may not benefit from any kind of uh, soldering. So it looks like maybe the maybe just doing the controller mod and then perhaps what I'm going to do is actually just go ahead and um, bend this more outward away from the flight controller so that it's not blocked by the the circuit board itself this will give it a lot better signal just sticking out like this away from the circuit board so I'm just going to go ahead and try that put it back together that along with the um, controller um, antenna mod and we will see how it performs okay so now that we've taken apart the Q7 and we um, figured out that we um, moved the antenna to point um, parallel down the leg, one of the legs, um, versus how it was kind of just bent over the flight controller, giving it bad reception. Now we can orient. Now we know which orientation to um, to put this antenna in. So I'm going to fix this orientation into kind of a, a lateral type of orientation here, coming out the side sideways, so the antenna will 
match more how the antenna is now in the Q7. So to do that, since it's a little bit loose there in the hole now, I'm just going to take a little bit of double-sided sticky tape. You can get this at any hardware store. And it's got stick them on two sides. So I'm just going to rip a little piece of this off. And this is strictly just to secure it into the uh, controller so it's not rattling around. If Maybe if you drill your hole a little bit smaller, you could just kind of snap it in there perfect and you wouldn't have to put this. But in my case, the hole's a little bit large, so I'm going to just put this in there. Okay, so now that it's wrapped around the portion that's going to go inside, I'm just going to make sure it's all stuffed in there nice. And stick it down in where you want it. Close it up. Twist it a little bit. Okay, so that looks good. So we can see a little bit of that white, but you know, you could trim that off with a uh, X-Acto knife or just paint it black or something if it bothered you. And there we go. So now we have our antenna. is all set up nicely so the decoupler and the transmit part of the antenna is in here and so any direction we put it in the transmit part of the antenna will actually go in that direction cool so it looks like we're set all right, so now let's just put it back together and see how it works. Okay, we got it all screwed back together and I'm gonna put some batteries back in now and see how it powers on. You could also put some super glue if this bothered you here. Um, I kind of left it like that to be able to kind of move this around if I wanted to a little bit. But, um, you know, put some super glue or hot glue as well if you wanted to make that a little more secure. Okay, so that's been a mod tutorial on how to extend the range drastically on your Q7 FY326 quadcopter. Uh, hope this helps. Like, subscribe, and catch you in the next one. Thanks a lot.